Here's some tips to make your kick drum sound great across multiple different speaker systems. So pay attention to the mix of the kick in this drop that I've put together here. With these improvements, it sounds like this. So I went for like a really aggressive mix down, like this is mixed super loud and kind of distorted on purpose. But you notice that kick is really hitting, it stands out, and I think, yes, it does sound distorted, but like in a good way that you kind of want, it has a lot of ag to it. So I'm going to explain some of the things I did to this kick to make it work. But the number one thing is, of course, just sample selection. The better your kick is, the less you're going to have to do to it, and the better it will sound. So here's what this kick sounds like on its own. Kind of like that. I thought this was like a really airy kick. It's not one I'd usually go for, just in terms of sound. I usually go for kind of darker, more subby. But this sounded really cool, I, I liked the room noise it had, and I think it just needed a few changes to be really good. So some of the things I did to it, I did some frequency shifting, I thought it existed just a little bit too high, so I moved it down 14 hertz, and I did some dynamic EQ on the highs just to take them out a little bit, and currently that makes it sound like this. Like so. And the last thing I did, you're gonna hear it right away when I turn it on. That. Saturn 2, this was the most important thing, I'm just doing some warm tape saturation to it. This kind of beefed it up quite a lot, and I think that was the most positive improvement. And from there I turned it up a few dB, until it was hitting my clipper in a nice way. You'll notice now, if I turn on and off the effects, you're going to hear a subtle but very effective difference. So listen here. It's on. Let's turn it off. So you see, it's pretty subtle what changes there, but that's because, like I said, the number one most important step is your sample selection. I also did a really interesting trick that I picked up a long time ago now, which is where you duplicate your kick, and you kind of boost that transient early, early body bit before the sub actually comes in, just so that way it's running into your clipper in a more aggressive way. So if you look at this with, say, my limiting and stuff off, it's kind of more noticeable on the snare, because my kick is actually running quiet and then turning up. But it creates something like this, where it's breaching your limiter, and then your limiter comes in and kind of squashes it down. I did something like that with my kick as well, but it's not necessarily noticeable on the visual because of the way that I leveled things. But then of course when I do my post gain, this kick now hits really good, and it's nice and aggressive, and I really like how it stands out in this mix. That's really all I did to it, that's just my simple like kind of philosophy around like how you can go about mixing your kicks aggressively using some saturation, some creative boosting into limiters, and really like kind of more unconventional methods like that. So drop a like on this video if it helped you out and subscribe for more, but thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.